Hey, it's Mazzy here, and this is an epilogue uh, video. Uh, home from Los Angeles, had a great four full days, four plus full days in LA. Hadn't been there in five years. And if you haven't seen uh, those three videos, excursions through various record stores in Los Angeles, in Pasadena, South Pasadena, uh, around the uh, greater LA area, we visit quite a few stores. I tried to identify every store, and in that video, you'll see at the front of each mini uh, store tour the signage so you can kind of search them out and uh, we didn't even scratch the service so many stores there i want to thank rob the wax for driving me around those two days i did rent a car because i know la well haven't been there in five years and i kind of know my way around and it turned out this situation i probably could have gotten away without renting a car, which I don't advise in Los Angeles, because I think if you're gonna really get out in LA, you, you wanna drive around. And since I know the city, I felt I needed a car, but I guess I could have the two days that I um, really thought I needed it. I probably could have done like an Uber Lyft situation for the few places I really had to get to, and it probably would have uh, been less expensive in the long run even doing that. But I, I'm so used to being a Californian, native Californian, the mobility of having a car, especially in a place like LA. Uh, the town was buzzing with uh, Carmageddon on Friday because of a David Gilmore concert at the Hollywood Bowl. And of course the Dodgers World Series, congrats to the Dodgers. It looks like they're gonna nail this one. Uh, even though I'm a Giants fan, I do understand uh, the LA love for the Dodgers. I'll leave that aside, but you understand if you're if you're a Dodger or San Francisco fan, Giants fan, you know exactly what I mean about that rivalry there. We had some great meals and one terrible meal. We went to a, uh, a place called Pinocchio's because it was a place that could handle a large group of 10 or 12 people. And it was the worst meatball sandwich, or as they say in the East Coast, a meatball wedge I've ever tasted. Bland, no spice, no garlic, no nothing. Meatball sandwich was terrible. But we went to Gus's Barbecue in South Pasadena on Saturday. Had a great time. And of course, had some great dinners, including one of my favorite places that everyone wants to go to. Yes, Hollywood Boulevard is a little sketchy in some cases these days. But make a reservation and go to Musso's and Frank's institution for, what, 70 years now, maybe more. Uh, old school, great place, great steaks. I had prime rib, which I haven't had in, I don't know when the last time I had prime rib. Probably at the House of Prime Rib in San Francisco, the best place on the West Coast uh, for prime rib. But it's an old school thing with great martinis with a little sidecar, so you get the extra, like the old milkshakes. I just thought for this video, I'm gonna go through some of the things I picked up. Now, there are some records I cannot show yet. Uh, one was given to me by an artist and uh, I'm not sure if I can show, but I'll wait. Uh, I'll talk to him later. The record comes out next April. And why really push it? Now, I haven't listened to most of these yet. I haven't listened to records since I've been home, uh, just two nights already from Los Angeles. And there's a couple other things uh, embargoed, if you will, uh, that I can't show yet. But uh, picked up a bunch of used records. I ended up getting more records on this trip than I did when I went to London for a week, which was sort of surprising for me. I just mentioned Robin Hitchcock. Obviously, I saw him recently. This is a record from 10 years ago, and I also did a feature on the new great book, uh, And the Roots of Rhythm Remain by Joe Boyd, the great producer. Joe Boyd and Robin Hitchcock put this out 10 years ago, 2014, and I had never heard it, and I kind of missed the boat on it. I didn't realize it was... Uh, out on vinyl, they had a used copy at Amoeba, so I picked this out. I did hear this, there's a song called San Francisco Patrol, but he does a really great version on here of the Doors' Crystal Ship. Everything has been about the Doors lately, so hearing his version of Crystal Ship is really kind of folky, psych in a way, psych folk. But um, I haven't heard the whole album yet, and I'm looking forward to this Robin Hitchcock's album, uh, The Man Upstairs from 2014. I got a used copy. Then there was a copy on the sub wall of Green River, and this is sort of a, a proto grunge band from the Pacific Northwest. I have one of their uh, later albums. I believe this is their first album. Some consider this the first grunge album. And I took a picture of it, Come On Down, and I sent it to my friend Kimbo up here, who knows all about the Pacific Northwest music. I'm still learning, even though I've been here 10 years. And it was a good price, original with the insert. 
Uh, so I picked it up and I've heard this music before. I just haven't owned a copy. Green River, proto grunge, I'd say. Now I have a reissue of this and I have a CD of this. For some reason, I haven't had an original copy since an American, since when I purged some of my records. But this is an original UK copy of the Cures album, and um, which is called Three Imaginary Boys. Always love this cover, so I'm looking forward to this. I know the Cures music. I saw the Cure on their, um, I think their very first tour uh, of America. They played the I-Beam on Haight Street in San Francisco. Your Arsenal, I am all in on Morrissey. Wanker as he is, I love him. I have these on CD but I haven't had a vinyl. This is a 214 vinyl, and I got this at Record Safari on the wall. I thought a pretty reasonable price uh, for it, but a sire, the 2014 issue, not an original, but uh, this is a nice uh, gatefold. Morrissey and the boys, and I got it, because the record was there. The record actually showed up in the store. And then this, this is in print, but I don't have this on vinyl. And this is Morrissey's Viva Hate. I love this record. I mean, this, of course, has one of my all-time favorite songs that right when it came out, it hit me, is uh, Every Day is Like Sunday. I just love, that's such a heroic, wonderful song. Don't have this on vinyl, never had it on vinyl. This is not uh, an original. This is a much later a reissue, but it was there in front of me, so I grabbed it. So I had a little bit of a, a Morrissey uh, uh, love fest while I was in Los Angeles. Dream Syndicate, the whole LA, the Paisley Undergrounds, Neo Psychedelic Band. Saw them uh, at the Fox Warfield, the Warfield in San Francisco, 81, 82, 83, when the Days of Wine and Roses came out. I absolutely love them. In the last decade, I think they put out three amazing records. They reformed. Get a chance to see them. They're so great. Steve Wynn, of course, uh, Carl Prokota, used to have Kendra Smith, and then Dennis Duck here on drums. This is the original. This is the one album I didn't have of theirs. I have all the other originals of the early one. This is a, an original from 1982, the Dream Syndicate. Great, great band, a lot of jams. Now this was a great deal. This was, was it Got A Groove? Is that the record store? You can see it in the video, but I've had my original UK copy. This never came out officially in America, as far as I know. This is a UK copy. My copy is actually in good shape, but my copy, the way, and I can see this is a little the same, the way this is, they kind of warp, and my copy, the cover, is really wanked out, my original. This was $15, but they have an anniversary sale. Everything is 20% off, so $12 plus tax for this man album. The great well spent with Deke Leonard and uh, Terry Williams, Mickey Jones, and Martin Ace, and of course, with guest star John Cipollina, the amazing guitar player that SG uh, from the Quicksilver Messenger Service, one of my favorite guitar players of the San Francisco scene. Uh, this is a wonderful live album. We used to play this in the store all the time in the 70s. And I guess that's not particularly rare. I just thought 15 bucks anyway, and since I already had it. So what I'll do is you know, make sure the record's fine, I keep this cover, and uh, I'll uh, sell or trade my other one. Uh, but it's an amazing album, so if I know someone locally who uh, wants it and will do a trade. I'm gonna have an extra copy of this. Wonderful record. And Rick Griffin, the designer uh, who did a lot of the Fillmore Avalon posters. The neighbors, lawn blowers are acting up now. <laughs> if you can hear that. So if someone's on headphones now, they hear that. I apologize. Uh, but uh, great, great album. And then this, I was very excited to see on the wall at Record Safari, 1967, U.S. Sealed Press. Now, I wasn't sure why they had this, because how would they know this was a 67 issue without opening it? Now, I did open it up, and sure enough, it is an original OG, uh, the incredible string band. I literally just talked about this album on my uh, Joe Boyd video, and it was the one incredible string band I really wanted. I think it's probably their best that I enjoy. And uh, from 67, it's just a wonderful, beautiful record. $30, but it was sealed, has a cut, American edition, and it was great. The next day I saw a, a copy for $15, but it was a Sunday's reissue. So it's not a particularly rare record, but I haven't seen it in a while, and it was kind of great to pick that up. Uh, another artist that I'm all in on, and one of my missing uh, albums, Sir Douglas Quintet, 
so it's like an $8 record, not too bad. Uh, live Texas Tornadoes, Tex-Mex music, of course with Augie Meyer. This is a live record. I just love that kind of uh, a border town, uh, not really Zydeco, you wouldn't call it Zydeco, but that really kind of soulful uh, Doug Somm, of course, uh, from the Sir Douglas Quintet. She's about a mover, uh, Mendocino, all that. And all his records that were on, uh, this is on Tacoma, uh, the great kind of label started by John Fahey originally. And I have Lawn Mowers Unite. Lawn Blowers Unite. This is basically the sound of this out my window, if you can hear it. There you go. I do have a copy of this, but for some reason my copy has some issues. And I found this at Permanent Records, cool a store owned by Lance, and I met him briefly in Austin uh, earlier in the year. Kind of a cool space. Again, look at that other video, you can see the space. This is a stamped, gold stamp promo, of course on Epic Records. And so uh, I'm looking forward to, I mean, I love this album. It's my favorite Clash album. Jesus! And also a permanent, I got the Tony Rice uh, unit acoustic record. I'm stopping the video and I'll come back when these guys are gone. When we were in Amoeba, uh, that was the day we met the most. I think there's about 10 of us, 12 of us or so in it. There's other people that came by from around the LA area, which is really great and really wonderful meeting, uh, hanging out with everyone. Some I've met before, and, uh, many I hadn't. And uh, Alex, who has a Diamond Marinda channel, who into some really interesting thing, actually gave me a record, which I'll uh, pull out in a little bit. I wanna make sure I, I show the right person who gave me the right records. I got a couple of records, but his friend um, is married to a Brazilian woman and we we're in the uh, world music section, went through the Brazilian and I said, pick me out something or, or showcase or show me some different things. And we went through the Brazilian section. This is what I ended up uh, picking up. Uh, this is uh, Leonardo Vibaccia and he's a guitarist. I haven't heard it yet, but the way he described it just kind of uh, excited me. So I thank you for the uh, turn on. I like when people who know a lot about different genres or different artists uh, suggest something. And you know, I, you get a feel if you can trust the person. I'm pretty open to different kinds of things. And I don't think this is very esoteric anyway. Love Brazilian music. So uh, thank you for that. I will check that out. Now here's a, a few things that I picked up uh, new things that, you know, I'm sure I could order them online. Maybe some of these picked up locally. Got this in Amoeba. Sue, Sue George, Brazilian artist, really great uh, singer, almost in a folk style. Uh, if you watch that video, I reminded people that uh, he did the cover uh, covers of the Bowie songs in uh, the aquatic uh, movie uh, that came out uh, by Wes Anderson. Uh, some years ago. That old soundtrack is a wonderful, wonderful soundtrack of those Bowie covers. So this is a, a 20th anniversary edition, and I've heard it's uh, good stuff, but I haven't heard all these songs. Um, this is Bobby Marin, and this is a comp of his work, a big part of the whole salsa samba uh, thing uh, over the years. He's born like in the early 40s, and I think he's still alive, and I just thought this was a cool comp and I'm um, looking forward to listening to this. Uh, this is a 1965 Samba classic. So I more went into the Samba latin -y, uh, sounds of, uh, and then Brazilian uh, sounds of my world music, this particular trip. And this is Sombroso Trio, M. Som Mayor. Uh, I haven't heard this again, but the description uh, was interesting. Uh, Ayerto is on it. Uh, Ayerto I, I've seen a couple times way back with Flora Purim. And of course, many uh, great percussion player. I think I have one of his CTI albums as well. So this looks really interesting. Again, I haven't heard it. Picked this up at Amoeba. And this is an album that I'm really looking forward to. Beautiful cover. This uh, Alex, again, uh, turned me onto this Alex from Diamond Marimba. That's his channel. And this is Shane Parrish Repertoire. Solo acoustic guitar recorded live. Uh, this is a 224, so this is a newish release. And uh, I think Alex knows that I kind of, I play play the spread, or what's the word in sports when you're betting, a, you know? Uh, yeah, I probably come center left, but I go far left, maybe not so far right, obviously. Uh, 
and I'm looking for some things that are adventurous. I don't always go too kooky, but I have some out there stuff. I, I, my guess is this isn't very out there, but it's probably just really beautiful, soothing acoustic guitar in a certain way. And uh, I'll try to report back on these once I listen to it, but I love this cover. And uh, thank you, Alex, for that, and thanks for coming out. And I'm sorry that you sat at the children's table at the, uh, the terrible uh, restaurant we went to uh, on Friday for lunch. A guy named Jeff, this is a private press, and no one's gonna understand uh, what this record means to me. This is Tov Lanu Lashir, It's Good For Us To Sing, 1975 private press of camp counselors and campers from Camp Swig in the Saratoga Mountains, above Los Gatos, Saratoga, uh, south of San Francisco, the mountains that on their way to Santa Cruz. Now. In 1968-69, I went to Camp Swig. Swig is the family that owned the Fairmont Hotel in San Francisco, and it's basically, it was kind of like a Jewish camp, a Jewish Zionist camp or something. And I went there, and I guess Jeff heard uh, on some stream, a live stream, me talking about going there. And he went there and got this in 1975, and he brought this to me uh, when we met in Los Angeles. And it's something that no one else in the world, there's like a handful of people would appreciate or like. So it's very uh, specific, all these uh, songs sung in Hebrew, some I know. I bet you I know a lot more of them uh, once I listen to them. But um, UAHC, United American Hebrew Camps. So they're uh, obviously Jewish-centric camps, Camp Swig, the Institute for Living Judaism. And um, it's something that um, I actually cherished. I had a great time those two years of uh, being... 14 and 15 going to summer camp for two weeks. Uh, I love that. And then, of course, the following year, I'd go with my confirmation class to Israel. Uh, it was a, a good time. I met a lot of friends that I've you know, known for a life here. And, uh, you know, I don't bring up my religion a lot here. I'm more of a cultural Jew. I'm not very religious, actually agnostic, if you know what that. If you don't know what that is, look it up. Uh, but um, this was an important time in my life, a per, uh, upbringing, and I met some, again, as I said, some great people. So thank you, Jeff, for this Camp Swig. Who would have thought? Camp Swig, the Eels, and Morrissey in the same video. What's that about? And then lastly, I picked up a record I've been meaning to get, because I get all his records, uh, the Eels. And uh, I also picked up at the same store, Mark Oliver Everett's, this uh, kind of this, this memoir he wrote that uh, I understand is pretty good at the same store. Now, the Eels, I've showcased their music. In fact, on my first L.A. or second day, I used one of his songs, Day in Hell, uh, which kind of represented in a kitschy way what L.A. is walking around Hollywood. Uh, but I enjoy that song and I enjoy his, his work. But uh, this is his most recent album. I just haven't gotten around picking it up. And they had signed copies at the store there. And uh, so I picked this up, E, which he, that's his moniker. His first two albums are under the name E. I've only heard the single, I forgot what the name of the single is. But he puts out a lot of records, a lot of limited editions uh, directly. So I admire him. His, his songs are used in a lot of films, including the Shrek films and other things. Uh, so he's probably making a good thing on licensing. He always has the color editions. I don't really care either way about color stuff, but um, he ties them in, color coordinates them usually with the cover type and everything, as you can see there, unlike some artists that don't seem to have that artistic connection or anything. So, uh, you know, usually beautiful artwork on his records, beautiful packaging, and just fun records. They're just very listenable and very enjoyable. So uh, that is the epilogue. That's the end of, uh, of the trip in LA. Sealed records, fucking hell. What's all that about? If you go buy records, play the fucking records. Don't just stick it on a shelf, play the fucking record. That's what it's for.